Caddy, welcome back. Darling, tell us what you very, very exciting your tour. Was it wonderful? It was wonderful, and I've just about got over jet lag, but it was the most intensive, joyful time. I mean, there were four concerts in four days. Um, we went to Canada, we went to the United States, and it was fantastic. We met amazing people, huge audiences, and lovely children who were all interested in music. <laughs> wanted to meet the children and it was fantastic. So I'm oh. just processing it all. How many of you were touring together? It was the entire family. So all seven children and both parents. So wow. that was in itself wonderful. Amazing, so. amazing. Quite a lot of organizing, I would imagine. A lot of organising, a lot of practical stuff, feeding them, making sure they've got all their clothes and their shoes and they haven't forgotten anything. And but just lots of cuddles and time together. So I'm feeling oh, very lovely. Very relaxed and very not yeah. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Well I've, I've naturally we have... even Natalie had when her son came home for a few a few days no, a few weeks. I I've never seen so much stuff on the sofa, Natalie. <laughs> Oh, that was packing to go away again. That was just every time I got a handful of stuff, I'd fold it and put it in a little line, but he just left it there. He doesn't, it didn't uh, put it in the suitcase till the last minute. Can you imagine <laughs> doing that seven times over? Oh, no. goodness. You're no. amazing, Caddy. You really are. So, Caddy, would you like to introduce our next guest, please? Oh, yes. So excited. I would love to, and it's a really surreal moment introducing my own daughter. But next up, we're going to talk to Isata, who is the eldest of my children, and she's a classical pianist, um, plays all over the world, and um, she went to the Royal Academy of Music, but now she's um, an independent concert pianist. And here is Isata. Can you see Isata? Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, aren't you beautiful? Oh, you are. Lovely to meet you all. <laughs> Lovely to meet you too. Can you How see are you? Me? I'm well, thank you. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. We, we are. We are family. now your great aunts, dear. We are now part of your family, whether you like it or not. Yes. Oh, we are. I assume mums agree to this. So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. My family can extend as widely as possible. <laughs> and the, Absolutely. <laughs> That's wonderful. Because actually, I know that you've done some amazing things and your, your, your career is, is sort of taking off, isn't it? And I know that you actually got the scholarship, the Elton John scholarship, which must yeah. have been incredible. And you played with him. Yes, yeah, so I played with him uh, at a concert in LA. And I think that was one of the first times I ever went to a pop concert in my life. So it was very... Exciting. And you were playing in it. How, where, what, I mean, what is this scholarship? Tell us about it and tell us how it all happened. Well, he used to go to the Royal Academy of Music kind of back in the day. And so he's remained a kind of supporter of students and a kind of donor of the institution. And so we met and I played with him and then kind of played to him and he said, oh, I'd love to support you if you go and study here. So that's how it kind of happened. Wonderful. Oh, wow. And how many how many people were at the gig that you did? Oh, gosh. I don't remember. Maybe, yeah. maybe a few hundred. It was actually in a kind of university. Um, so it wasn't huge, but it was packed. I'm not very good at estimations. Maybe a thousand. <laughs> You are so talented. You are the, the, your website, and there's there's a piece of you playing Rachmaninoff with your brother. Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh god, it's so beautiful. You are <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Thank How can fingers really work hard. that fast? It's just amazing. My husband and I were looking online this morning to book to come and see you at the proms. Oh, so I love you. definitely going to come along and see you doing that. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. And Rachmaninoff is, is your inspiration, your number one inspiration. Is that correct? Yeah, he's my favourite composer, the kind of yeah. first composer I really loved. Wonderful. Because he yeah. actually was a protégé of um, Tchaikovsky, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure exactly what the timings were. Um, yeah. Whether they existed around the same time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amazing. You come from the most extraordinary family. We, we were always talking to Caddy about, you know, what is it like to live in a house full of so much talent? What does it feel like for you? 
Yes, at the moment it's a house full of building works. <laughs> <laughs> Not as enjoyable but growing up yeah we just we were used to music coming from every room of the house so you just got used to constant noise and constant kind of life and that was that was the way and that's something I really enjoyed actually. And wow. where are you in the in the uh the seven kids where, whereabouts are you? I'm the eldest. You're the eldest <laughs> so are you the bossiest? I was when we were younger yes <laughs> I was really bossy. I think sometimes it comes out now, but now that everyone's growing up, they don't really listen in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't control them anymore. No. Your mother is being very, very quiet. We don't <laughs> like this. Paddy, <laughs> speak to your daughter. Yes. It's really interesting because, of course, I think I know the answers to all the questions. So, um, I mean, I think the one thing that people were saying to you, is it lovely growing up with lots of music in the house? And I think actually it's often practice is not always wonderful music. So I think it's more like <laughs> scales and studies and noise and mistakes. And it's a very different kind of thing to what people think. So I always laugh when people say, is it lovely growing up with a house full of music? I think, well, it's clashing notes, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's the thing of growing up in a house. Not It's not just what you're all doing. It's the... It's the passion behind it. It's the dedication yeah. and the, and and the, the discipline. It's unbelievable. It's wonderful. It's just unbelievable. It's such a story. I think discipline is easier when you're not doing it by yourself. So that's one thing yeah. that was because everyone else was doing it as well. So it's just like being in a school or something. Yeah. And how was your tour? Because yeah, you've just come back, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, it was quite short. It was only four days. So it was very full on. But it was nice because we were all together as a family. And so you don't have that loneliness. It's nice to kind of experience it together. But we're all quite jet lagged and ill now that we've come back. So. Oh, <laughs> and mummy is there to look after you. Exactly. Well, that's, that's the idea. But really, it's to kind of make sure that things are not forgotten and picking up what people have dropped or left behind in dressing rooms. I mean, it was four concerts in four days. So it was really busy. <gasps> And wow. it's just everyone is getting the right amount of food at the right time and they, their dresses are done up and it's things like that. It's it's lots of practical stuff, isn't it? I think we it both is. heard about when we were going to get our food and our sleep. Yes. <laughs> and where, tell, tell us about where did you go? Where did you travel? So we went to Vancouver uh, and then we went to um, Minnesota, to uh, no, to St. Paul, actually, in Minneapolis. So two <laughs> cities. Wow, in very so, few, few you're days. Sort of, you're sort of Von Trappy, aren't you, your family, in a sort of weird way? <laughs> yeah, people have said that. I think it's <laughs> the same amount of siblings as that yeah. family, all playing music. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be, it'd be lovely to, to see you sing that. Goodbye, farewell. Be... <laughs> and and you're, you were in, um, where, where did you go? In Antigua before that, weren't you, as well? Yeah, that was only only a few weeks ago, actually. Yeah, that was also all as a family, kind of working with an orchestra there of young people and doing some concerts as well. Do you wow. have an ambition as a family, like that maybe one day you're going to have the Kenny Mason Academy and then train other people? Would you, would you like to do that? Would you like to have your own college of excellence? I think as a family, we have... Um, big ambitions around Antigua because we're trying to really create um, an orchestra mm -hmm. there and eventually maybe have a music festival there and because there's not much mm -hmm. music on the island and so we're trying to get more and more people interested so I think that's a big ambition we have as a family and then everyone has their own personal ambitions outside of that as well. Oh it's just it, it's just wonderful to, to have you all but can you imagine when you all have your own children you won't need an orchestra you just make your own. Yeah, but we can't assume they'd want to be musicians. They might rebel and, you know, become oh, true. Strong. That is true. But yeah, yeah, we're we're going to need a bigger kitchen <laughs> if you have all these yeah. grandchildren coming into your life. My goodness. But it's yeah, quite a common thing, isn't it, that musicians have children who don't want to be musicians. It yeah. is. It does happen quite a lot because I think it's such a hard job and they see their parents and think, nah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be a dentist instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Earn more money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's it's just it's just such a lovely um, thing. I mean, because music it's the same as acting. Because you know, once you're passionate about something, and it and it, it must be so nice. I don't have any siblings, but it must be so nice to be to have a passion that is shared by your siblings. 
Mm-hmm. It must give you, I mean, did you did you fight when you were younger a lot or did you always have a common ground? No, there was definitely fighting. Um, <laughs> we were still kind of normal siblings, but we also had a common ground and we, we that common ground has lasted. It's kind of kept us bonded together. So we do still have that support system and we do have a lot in common, but you have fights as well. It's both at the same time. Yeah, because I've got my grandsons yeah. and they fight all the time. The only thing they have in common is the, is the you know, going for a game. And then they're quiet with each other. But <laughs> I think it's, you know, the eldest is about to start piano lessons. And I know there's, oh, I know that's going to be very hard because I think once you start the, the traditional way of learning piano, you know, with the, it's just so boring, isn't it? Oh, no, I think it depends. <laughs> I mean, hmm. You know, you I don't have... really find it boring. I think it can be, it takes a lot of concentration and discipline to kind How of... How old were you when you first started playing? I was six, but for the first two years, I used to just kind of compose and improvise. I would hear songs on the radio and try and play them on the piano. And that was really fun because it was kind of just getting into the improvisatory nature of music rather than it being... That's wonderful. That, that's that's fantastic. fantastic. Was that your that's teacher that encouraged that? that? No, that was outside of my lessons, actually. That was just something I, that's just how I enjoyed the piano and how I came to it. Yeah, but wow. I think with a lot, a lot of us who learn the piano, you know, you, you start, you sit there with your, you have to hold your hands right, and you don't think that you're going to go and start playing at home. You know, it, it's, it becomes, if you're not naturally attuned to it, then it becomes a chore because it's, it's so difficult to do. I mean, I've tried, I mean, the recorder, the piano, the guitar, I'm just not... Um, but yet my son-in-law plays 12 instruments you know it's just it's easy for him yeah I think yeah I think you have to really really love it and want to do it because whether it comes naturally or not there is going to be um an element of having to you know repeat lots of yes. things an element of work as well yeah hard work yeah exactly now, do- also I think music is is a great unifying force anyway and so and, and creativity and to have that in your home I think is is just so wonderful, and and you know we're talking about energy, and um, uh, and I think the energy in your home must be incredible. Yeah, it's when we all come back, um, it's kind of rekindled the same. I mean, yeah, it's probably overwhelming for poor mum and dad now because you're used <laughs> to. <it. laughs> but but do we have anything? Do we have a nice film of you uh, playing? We're we going to show that. I love the idea of you setting up a music festival. That sounds amazing. And so, I love the um, fact that it's an, in Antigua. I'm sorry to be so, you know, yes, we're all coming. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yes. So yes. transparent yes. about being in Antigua and how gorgeous it is and how lovely and warm and yes, yeah. nice. And also there's a music festival, of course. Combined with music. Exactly. <laughs> there's many attractions to Antigua. Yeah. Yes, there are. What's lovely as well, it's not just classical music in Antigua, so you do a lot of, um, you do a lot with, I mean, there's there are steel pans, there are there is local music, there's folk songs, there's classical music, and that marriage of the two is incredibly creative. So that's what I like about be, it being in Antigua as well. And yes. I think that's how music should always be creative and should always be opening its doors. And, and, and I think when you grew up, it wasn't just music as well. You used to do acting in the hallway as well, didn't you? And <laughs> singing and dancing and <laughs> always making well, I, I, I mean, you're just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Kelly, but as, as, as such was, she was the, the first child. How did, did you know that she had a, you know, she was connected to music yeah. even from a very young age? Even before she could walk, she used to 
used to hear music and she used to sing perfectly in tune and she used to and used to think oh that's that's interesting we'll introduce her to the piano and then when she got on the piano she just used to hear songs on the radio anywhere and play them and improvise on them and do a left hand and put them in the minor key and the major key and we thought well, this is interesting so yeah. wow yeah. yeah that is yeah. more than interesting and that's why you like the lessons, you see. And I didn't because I never did any of that stuff. And um, I, th I think it, I think ch children should be taught in a different way anyway. I think, you know, because you have that natural improvisation skill going on, that's why, you know, being taught the practical side became interesting, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And every child is different and we all have different things we gravitate towards and everyone needs to be taught differently as well. So I definitely found that with seven, you were all different because you started at six and then your younger sister started at three because she was desperate to get wow. on the yeah, piano <laughs> but then later on the next child we try i tried to start her at three and she just wanted to jump on top of the piano so <laughs> everyone, everyone is different. <laughs> oh how wonderful is there anything that you haven't done yet that you'd like to do Hello. um there's pieces of music that i'd like to learn and record i haven't recorded um, some pieces of Rachmaninoff that I love, for example, that would be something. And I'd also like to play at the proms. That's now happening this year, as you mentioned earlier. But that's something I've always wanted to do. Wonderful. And I'm well, sure we are going to be your biggest. We already are your biggest fans. We're very yeah, honoured to have your mummy as as a wonder bird. So you are a wonder chick. <laughs> <laughs> wonder daughter. <laughs> Thank you. It's so lovely to meet you and no. to talk to you and, and love you to come back anytime. Yes. And I can't welcome. wait to see you at the proms. Yes. yes. Thank you so much for coming. We'll, we'll be there. We'll be there. Thank you. Bye. Have a lovely Thank day. Thank you. Thank you Bye so day. much. Take care. Bye. 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 A beautiful oh, girl. Daddy. How gorgeous, Caddy. She is divine, isn't she? Oh. oh, she's a lovely personality. She's good company, so I'll miss her. Oh, but, oh I bet. I bet. How, how old is she now? 26. My God, she's wow. so beautiful. Very yeah. beautiful. She's so talented. Wow. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful kids. We're so lucky to all, we all have lovely children, don't we? Really lovely kids. Yeah, and it, it makes life, you feel like there's something carrying on after you. And yes. something, I always think they're all better than me. So that's a lovely thought. <laughs> Oh. Well, then, but they are all part of you. I mean, that, that's the whole yes. thing about the, the wonderful thing about having children is that they are part of you and they're carrying. So it's it's every area of yourself that's mm. that sort of just there in, in another form. That's you know, she wouldn't be here if it was out with, with, without you well, and, your, and your eggs exactly. your eggs in your oven. Caddy, uh, you're very beautiful and talented. So, you know, and, well, and your husband, so... They take so much potential into the future that I was never able to do. So I think there's always a sense of hope, I think, with children. Yeah. What yeah. were you going to say now? Oh, no, just, just you know, thinking of childhood and our, our house was full of music in a different way. They were always doing shows. And there were always costumes everywhere. And I just, I think back and it just makes me feel so happy thinking oh. of you know, sharing their childhood, because you become like a child yourself, joining in in, but in various Natalie, yes. you, Natalie, you are still a child. And you are you. only seven and a half. And you. And you pretend eight. to be a grown-up, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we had, um, we had a lot of um, music as well, and acting things, you know, um, creating plays at home but not in the set not to the same um kind of veracity that you, your wonderful family have caddy but it's just having creativity in the house i think really is fantastic and it just you know it it is is so good for the energy of the house we're talking about energy on friday we are yes. talking <laughs> about energy on friday oh no we are going to be talking about energy on friday funny you should mention all yeah this we energy. are Mm -hmm. But um, yes, so yes, we've got a, a feng shui expert on the habit, which I am so excited, so excited about having on the show. But uh, girls, it's time to go. And Caddy, thank you for introducing us oh, to your Caddy, family. Natalie, been a lovely we're going to have to meet your you. son soon. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes, definitely. We'll have to Wonderful. meet them all one by one, won't we? <laughs> yeah, I think we will. Yeah. Definitely.
Absolutely, because Tali has been on. That. Tali has been on, and Kira's been on, and Mons has been on. So we've definitely got to have your boy on. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Because where is he now, your son, Nat? Harry is in Atlanta, Georgia, um, playing Mr. Mistopheles in a production of Cats, and he's had the most wonderful reviews. I mean, it's an ensemble piece, really, but he's just had these fantastic reviews. And you know, you don't make tons of money doing what you do, but to me, I just think, my God, this is a six-year-old child. He 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 watched the the video when he was a little six-year-old. And all he dreamt about was playing that part. And he's just been working with the actor who played Mr. Mistopheles there in Georgia, Atlanta. And he's doing it. To me, that's that's making it. You know, even if you haven't made a ton of money out of it, he's just done what he wanted to yeah, do. I, I always think that, you know, I more important that, when, yeah. when people are, you know, performing, they're doing the same job if they're performing on a cruise ship or if they're performing like the Rolling Stones in front of, I don't know, 100,000 people. It's actually the same job. It's just, the other one is it's slightly more well-paid, but they're not doing yeah. anything different. Do you know what I mean? Really? And I think it's living your passion and that is what Wonder Birds are all about, I think. It's I so exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's visualization as well, isn't it? It's visualizing, and you know, it, it, it's a great lesson to, to look at, children who have the drive that your children have got now you've obviously been very instrumental but they, they didn't necessarily all have to follow it but they've all followed it and the drive comes from them even mm -hmm. though you're there to support it it's got to come from the person hasn't it yeah absolutely, absolutely. and yeah. All, all, all the concerts they used to do in the hallway of the house i think all of that those concerts they always say they were more nervous for those than they are playing in the, at the proms or the, you know i've just realized who you are caddy you are the modern day mama rose <laughs> oh <laughs> she's a lot nicer than mama rose though. she's a, a lot <laughs> the modern day gypsy right we've got to wrap up we'll yep. see everybody on friday see you on yeah. friday see you bye. friday bye bye, bye.